Deuteronomy chapter 23. It's going into the law of the children of Israel that are going into the land. He that is wounded in the stones, private area, or has his privy member cut off, shall not enter the congregation of the Lord. You got to put yourself a question there. Is that a sex change or not? They should not enter in the congregation of the Lord. A bastard. That's the first time that shows up in the Bible. Born out of wedlock. Shall not enter in the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation. Shall he not enter in the congregation of the Lord. Now I know somebody that was involved in the Catholic Church. And wanted to join the church. And because of this verse here. Because. Of his parents, the situation thereof would not even let him into church because he was a bastard. And going by that, they would say that they believe they're the congregation of the Lord. Okay, interesting. An Amorite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter. Into the congregation of the Lord forever. Now it says Moabite. Isn't it glad for Ruth that it does not say a Moabite is. Or a Moabite. Notice how God put Moabite knowing the future. Knowing a woman named Ruth. A Moabite is. Will love him so dearly. Will do all she will do to leave her Moabites, leave her gods, leave her family, and come into the nation of God, into Bethlehem, and serve him, and become the great-grandmother of David, the great-great-great-great-grandmother of Jesus Christ. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way. As they're traveling to their, to their promised land, they stopped off. Moses said, listen, we'll go just the highway. If we use your water, we'll pay for it. If we eat any of your food, we will pay for it. But just let us go through. And, God, and they said, no. And God said, I will curse them that curse you so they don't get a blessing. Where you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against the Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia. Look at the information you get on Balaam there. To curse thee. So here, Balaam, and we went through that in numbers. Curse these people because we know you can curse. The curse happens and you bless. It bless happens. We want to hire you for the purpose to curse them children and pass on for Abraham from Isaac to Jacob to the 12 tribe to where we are with Moses today. God says, you want to curse them? That's fine. I'll curse you. By the way, Balaam, you know what the message is to them three times? Tell them they can't be cursed. They'll never be cursed and their iniquities I will not look at. How's that? And because of that, Moabite comes knocking on the, on the temple. We come here for God. Scripture says no. But sirs, we, we, us men, we want to do right. Nope, sorry. A little Moabite woman comes. I want to serve God. Come on in. See how the wording is? You see how it is if you were to change a word or add a word to the Bible? Now, I don't know. I don't care. I didn't look up. But what if the modern, modern Bible said Ammon, Ammon, the children of Ammon, the children of Moab? I don't know. Maybe they, I, then that would ruin Ruth. And there's a place in, in the Gospels where it said, Jesus says, I'm not going to go there. And I forget. There's one word. I forget what the word is. And. The new Bibles removed that word. So when he does show up to the feast, it makes Jesus a liar. Be careful of the word. And be, be certain of the words in the Bible as I'm studying the, the words of the Bible the first time they show up. Those words prove that the Bible is not written by man. It's written by God. Don't mess with the words. Because they hired Balaam. Verse 5. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam. That's kind of interesting because Balaam would, when we went over the story, God says, well, what are these men doing? They want to curse this nation. They want to curse these people. And God says, I'm not going to curse them. But he would not hearken unto Balaam. 
So evidently, Balaam was part of wanting to curse those children of Israel. And remember, his doctrine, his teachings was for Israel to go fornicate, to adulterate, to get involved with, the, with Beth Peor, or the God thereof. But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity in all the days forever. Don't go running to Moab. Don't go help to Moab. Thou shalt not abhor Edom. For he is thy brother, Esau. Esau is Edom. Edom is Esau. They're brothers between uh, Rebekah and Isaac. Thou shalt not abhor. It means extreme hatred and Egyptian. Because thou was a stranger in his land. Now, you're not to hate the Egyptian for what he's done to you. Remember. Remember what happened to you. And there were Egyptians amongst the children of Israel through the wilderness journey. Some of them still wanted the Egyptian ways. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. That's the Egyptians. And maybe the Edenites, but I really don't believe the Edenites because there's one whole book dedicated against Edom. Edom, not only when the children of Israel come through with Moses, that they will not help the children of Israel. Later on, when, when King uh, Nebuchadnezzar comes with Babylon, Edom is capturing the Jews and selling them back over to, Mo to the Babylon. Say, hey, look, I found a Jew. How much will you give me? So at, it's got to be to the last, the Egyptian. And God says the Egyptian can come in. And I know personally a missionary that has gone and probably is still going over to Egypt and witnessing to them about Jesus Christ. And they're getting saved. The children that are begotten of them shall enter the congregation of the Lord in their third generation, three generations later. When the host goes forth against the thine enemies, then keep thee from every wicked thing. Uh, we just read it as a family. Now look at that. That's Achan. That's Achan. Achan is there when Moses says, you better keep yourself from that wicked thing. And Joshua is going to tell the children of Israel, get away from that wicked thing. Joshua is going to call it a cursed thing. Achan has been warned twice. And the sin of Achan has been recorded in the book of Deuteronomy. So I don't think Achan was innocent. And there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chances, that's the first and last time that shows up, chances, him by night. Then shall he go aboard out of the camp, he shall not come within the camp. But it shall be when evening cometh, 6 p.m., he shall wash himself with water, and when the sun is down, sunset, he shall come into the camp again. You got to read this whole section before we look at what's happening here. Thou shalt have a place on. Thou shall have a place also without the camp, whether thou shalt go forth abroad. Verse eleven. But it shall be with even come. He shall. I read that. He shall wash himself with water when the sun is set down. Set down at sunset. He shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, not in the camp itself, whether thou shalt go forth abroad. Sem uh, colon. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon. It shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad. Thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. That's bathroom. The children of Israel, when they had to go to the bathroom, they were to go outside the camp, they were to bring a paddle, dig a hole, do their business, and then cover it. And when you got the man here, it looks like, uh, verse 10, 
It says, there among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chances him by night. He had an accident. <laughs> he used to step out of that camp. He used to wash himself. And when sun set, he can come back in. So that stuff is vile to God. Let's read more. Verse 14, for the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of the camp. There he is, God's walking around to deliver thee. And to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy. That he see no unclean thing. Run back to verse 13. Dung. In thee. And turn away from thee. If they didn't bury their poop. And God come walking in. You're unclean. That's filthy. It's interesting how God has a thing about that. Verse 15. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master thy servant, which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee, even among you, in the place which he hath cho which shall choose in one of thy gates, where it liketh him best. Thou shalt not oppress him. Here's a runaway slave. Do you know the story of that in the New Testament? Philemon, Onesimus. And he dwelt with Paul for a while. And Paul is using him. Paul wants him for the ministry. And Paul realizes that this man is under the bondage, under the price of another man, Philemon. And he's like, I can't keep you. I am going to send you back to your, ma to your master, which violates the law, which we're not under the law. And I'm going to send you this letter to Philemon. And if he's going to keep you, he's going to keep you. But if he releases you and gives you freedom, I want you to come back here and I want you to serve the Lord with me. Paul, he says, listen, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I'm the Benjamin of the Benjamin. I am the Pharisee of the Pharisees. I obeyed the law. And here he disobeyed the law. And you will find Onesimus written in the Bible as he was still and kept being a faithful servant to God through Paul. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Well, look at the two sexes right there. Sins. A whore and a sodomite. Not allowed. Now, it's interesting. It says, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel and no sodomite of the sons of Israel. They got the daughters of Israel and the, son, and the sons of Israel, the male and the female. And if it's the same classification of the sin, God calls it a whoredom. If a man sells himself, which they do have men that sell themselves, they're called a sodomite because a lot of times when you got a male prostitute, he will sell himself to another male. Perverse world. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog, unclean animal, unto the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So, don't bring your perversion money into the house of the Lord. You're making money from being a whore. Don't don't give it to God. You're making money off anim animals that are unclean. Don't bring it to God. Where would that be? Well, there were a bunch of men who had swine upon the areas when Jesus was. That's the land of Israel. There was a man who, who said to his father, give me all my stuff and wasted all this stuff. And he ended up in a pigsty, which is unclean. So if he had, which he didn't get any money, the Bible says, but had he been paid by that swine owner, he couldn't bring it to the house of God. That, that animal's unclean. Aren't you glad we're under grace? If you had a, a, a kennel of dogs today, we're under the law. God says, I don't want that money. But dogs are unclean. But we're under grace. Thou shalt not lend... Upon usury interest to thy brother, Jewish, 
Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Anything that you lend out to your brother. If you lend out, uh, if it costs $10, you get back $10. You don't get any interest. Unto a stranger, Gentiles, thou mayest lend upon usury. So God has given the Jew permission and authority by the law. You can go ahead and be a banking people to the Gentile, uh, yeah, to the Gentiles. You can give them interest rates, but to fellow Jews, no. I wonder if that's practiced amongst Jewish bankers today, amongst Jewish customers. If there's a Jewish bank or a Jewish lending system and a Jewish person comes walking in and needs help, I wonder today if they charge them usury or interest. The Bible completely says no. But to the stranger, thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother, Jewish, thou shalt not lend usury upon usury. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thou settest thy hand to do... Uh, all thou settest thy hand to in says thy hand to in the land, whether thou goest to possess it. Now, that can be a loophole for a Jewish person to. Well, we're in the United States of America. We're not in the land. Ah, okay. Looking for the first loophole in the Bible in the law. And there it is. If you're in the land of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. The Bible says, the law said, you can't charge them usury. So if you're in Italy, you're in Egypt, you're in Greece, you're in Germany, you're in America. Well, they're not in the land. That's kind of interesting there, that one. But what did God tell them? They're supposed to be in the land. That's their land. They're not supposed to be anywhere else. When God brought judgment upon them, when God treated them and brought them to other lands... It's because of their sins. It's because of judgment. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee. And it would be sin in thee. And you see that in the Old Testament. Solomon writes about this. Jesus speaks about this. Paul speaks about this. It's in the church age documents. If you got a vow, you better pay that vow important. Japheth, you say, well, that guy is so wicked, he killed his daughter. But he vowed a vow unto God. I don't care if he was thinking of a chicken or an ox or uh, whatever clean animal is going to come out of that house, whatever he was thought of. He would never have thought the day of his life it would have been a human being. But yet he stuck to his vow. It's wrong. But he stuck to his vow. You guys say that. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. Don't even open your mouth. Don't even say it. It's better not say it and have no sin. And better than saying it and not doing it. And it's a sin. And if it's a sin, you got to go to the temple, Old Testament. you got to bring an animal. you got to confess to that priest in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament. I'm not talking about a priest today. And if we do it as Christians, we need the first John 1 9. We need to confess it. We need to get it right. We need to make duty vow, even though we didn't do it. Restitution. That which is going out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform. Even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast. Promise with thy mouth, do it. Jesus tells us in Matthew, every idle word, man's going to give an account. If man only, if you only heard from the pulpits today, worldwide, that whatever your big mouth says, God is writing it down, and you're going to be hold to it, unless it's under the blood of Jesus Christ, because I hear from a lot of pulpits, I hear from a lot of Christians, foolishness that comes out of their mouth. And they're not even sorry. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard. Okay. Then thou mayest eat grapes. Thy fill. 
at thy own pleasure. Sit down and have grapes. American would have you, the police come and have you arrested. What would you do with this in a grocery store? <gasps> you ever see people walk around eating grapes? <laughs> you ever see that? Well, why is it just grapes? I've never seen anybody grab an apple and start eating. You know, supposedly the apple was that big sin. May eat grapes, grapes, thy fill in thy own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vest. Don't you grab a handful and put them in a purse. Put them in your laundry bag. Put them in your grocery bag. Put them in. You just sit down and eat what you can, which is not going to be much. But you're not to go in his vineyard and start shopping with a grocery carriage and load it up and take off. Now, the next one's interesting. When thou cometh into thy standing corn of thy neighbor, and that would be wheat or barley, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thy hand. That's what the disciples were doing. Matthew 12, 1, Mark 2, 23, and Luke 6, 1. They were going through the field and they were rubbing it. And the Pharisees couldn't get them for that because that's what the law said. They could do that as they're walking through. So it's the Sabbath day. Let's, let's pick on them because it's the Sabbath day. Thou mayest pluck the ears with thy hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. In other words, you can't harvest, but you're walking through his land. You know, that's good. But don't you get upset if you have a vineyard or a fig tree and you look out your window and there's someone over there eating figs and you've been having your neighbor's corn. It's help yourself while you help your brother and is this one nation under God to take care of each other. That's not America today. America today, if you go to a sample, all right, put a penny in there. It's no, it's not what it says. And the person that goes to the vineyard and or the corn, if he's got cows, it's be okay for a guy to come along. Can I have a drink of the milk of that cow? I'm thirsty. Yes. Taking care of each other. <laughs> 